Welcome back. In this video, we're going to focus on how to develop a system part number for motorized breaker panels built on the QOPL switch rated branch circuit breaker platform. For determining part numbers on the networkable RPC platform, you'll want to refer to the RPC video series. That'll be covered under a different video. Now, anytime we talk about a QOPL based uh, platform, and the QOPL, as you recall, are the ones that are uh, can be fit into any existing QO compatible load center or square D uh, panel board. Now the first thing we need to know when we talk part numbers is we need to answer the question how do you want to control it. If you think back to our video on the control board on the control uh, driver boards uh, that Lintec manufactures there's three types. There's the MS series control board for modular sequencing and that's the one that allows us to control a whole system of breakers with the touch of a single button. Or you can come in and request the LC series of control board. And these are the boards that are controllable with DMX512. We have a DMX512 input, we assign our first address, and then you can address the breakers individually and turn them on and off uh, uh, individually as well. And then we have the SC or serial control series. Now the SC or serial control series takes an input exactly like the DMX board, but it's uh, RS-232, obviously. And again, with that system, you set your jumpers to uh, pick your first address, and then you can address all the uh, motorized breakers individually and control them individually as well. So that's the first question we have to answer. Is it an MS series, is it an LC series, or is it an SC series uh, panel type? Now the next is uh, what kind of panel that we're looking at. Are we looking at a load center? These are both examples of load centers uh, built by Square D. Now load centers are typically referred to as kind of a residential size or residential style enclosure. Uh, they're made, uh, the main uh, high voltage cabinet is made to fit between uh, two studs for instance. Now of course Lintec adds a separate um, a low voltage compartment for our electronics on there. But this we refer to as a short load center that has 30 spaces when it comes from the factory and this is what we call a tall load center it has 42 spaces so this is built on a 30 space enclosure load center this is built on a 42 space enclosure now one thing you need to know when you're working with Lintec is is that of course because we have to power our electronics we always take one circuit to control or power our electronics so typically uh, when we refer to how many available circuits you always need to subtract one right from the start uh, for the breaker that uh, we take okay so for instance, this panel then would be an MS LC for modular sequencing load center. This would be an LC LC for lighting control load center. And that would tell us how we're going to control it and what kind of enclosure it is. The third thing we, ne we need to know from you is whether it's a single phase or a three phase. Now these are all three phase cabinets, but we also uh, manufacture uh, or work with single phase cabinets as well. Uh, but the majority of them uh, have our three phase. Um, here you can see a representation for three-phase power coming into the main. Okay, so after the, the single number to tell us whether it's a one or a three-phase, we need to know how many uh, available slots you want to work with, and that tells us whether we're working with a short or a tall cabinet. So for instance, this would be referred to as a 326 because it's three-phase and there's 26 available uh, slots. And a short load center, even though we start with 30 available slots from the factory, we need one to power our control, as I mentioned, and then these three places are taken up by the main breaker. In a short load center, our standard breaker size, our standard main breaker size is 100 amps, and that fits on the back plane. So we have to subtract four available slots. So again, uh, in continuing the designation, this would be an LC, LC 326 for three phase and 26 available motorized breaker slots. This then would be an MSLC 341 because it's three phase and it has 41 available slots after you take away one slot to power our control. Okay, And then moving over to this, this would be an MSP, modular sequencing control boards, P for panel board, three phase with 41 available slots again because we need one to power our, our, our uh, electronics. And then the last thing we need to know when you, when you uh, give us a part number is how many breakers you want to control. Now <clears throat> on the MS style control board each board can handle uh, or manage 12 motorized breakers. 
you'll see that there's 12 motorized breakers attached to this control board and over here as well. Um, now in, these in, the, in both of these cases, in the panels case and the tall load center, these are, these are filled, all 41 available slots are filled. So it takes four control boards to handle 41 breakers. So uh, this would be 341-48, and the dash 48 tells us that we, we want uh, four control boards to manage all 41 available slots. If we only wanted to control 20 breakers, for instance, would only need two, so we'd order it would be an MSLC 341, and then uh, the 20 motorized breakers that we wanted to control. So the MS series can control 12 breakers per board. Now, the LC and the SC series, they only control 10 breakers per board. Uh, because we're addressing these individually, we need a little bit more electronics on the board. So there's only enough space to, to connect uh, 10 breakers in either the SC or the LC series. So this, for instance, is a uh, LCLC 326-10 because this LC board uh, or DMX driven control board can only handle 10 breakers and we've got all 10 positions taken up there. Okay? And again, a dash 20 or dash 30 if we wanted to add additional motorized breakers. Uh, and then the very last thing we need to know is circuit, circuit counts uh, by breaker type. In the world of the load centers, we use snap-in breakers. Their designation starts with an MB that stands for motorized breaker. These are all MB20s, but we can also uh, install MB15s or MB30s if you wanted a 15 or 30 amp. Uh, single poles are available in 15, 20, or 30 amps. So it would be a number slash MB20. That tells us how many MB20s. A number slash MB30s tells us how many MB30 uh, amps, uh, motorized uh, 30 amps you need, etc. And then if you wanted multiple pole breakers, that amperage number is preceded by how many poles. So for instance, uh, in a two pole, pole world, if you wanted to order a two pole 20 amp, it would be an MB220, uh, or an MB320 would be a three pole 20, um, et cetera, okay? Now when we're talking about the uh, motorized breakers in the panel, there's one uh, additional difference. As I mentioned, in the load centers, we, only, we can only deal with snap-in or MB breakers. Now, in the panel board, we can also deal with, uh, and most people actually uh, request or require, bolt-in breakers. So if you want to designate um, a bolt-in breaker, uh, you just add a B as a prefix to that uh, breaker type. So for instance, uh, everything we described here, if you want a bolt-in, you just add a B to it. So a um, MB20 becomes a BMB20. A uh, bolt-in unmotorized breaker becomes a BUMB20. Uh, uh, and again, uh, dash 30, dash 230, or dash 220 for two pole 20, dash uh, uh, 320 for a three pole 20, et cetera. So uh, that B tells us that it's a uh, panel board bolt-in style breaker here. And then the last bit of information we need is on the main breaker. Now standard, uh, what we ship with the short load center is 100 amp main. Again, that is, uh, fits on the back plane, so that takes up three spaces. But in our tall load center and in the panel board, uh, we ship these with the 225 amp main standard. Now we can change that main type out, but we need to know that after you give us your breaker counts. And that, that completes the, how we put together a part number. Now, I'm trying to keep this simple, so I'm talking in generalities, and I think I just covered probably 95% of the panels that we typically ship in terms of how we work their part numbers. But we make exceptions to the rules all the time, so please ask. If you, uh, if you didn't hear me talk about the kind of panel that you'd like, for instance, MLOs. We ship a lot of MLO-style panels um, every day. If, you know, if, if, you've got a, if you've got a special electrical request, run it by us uh, because we make exceptions all the time and we'll be happy to make one for you. So that's the basics of how to put together a, a system part number for the QOPL uh, motorized breaker platform. Uh, Please call if we can ever help. Thank you very much.